right, hello, Internet world. This is Atish, and welcome to this month's edition of Discord Demo Day. I am very happy to have my guest, Jeremy Olander. Um, but before we get into Jeremy, if this is your first time tuning in, uh, Discord Demo Day is an opportunity for you, music fans and producers all over the world, to submit your demos to us through my Discord channel. And my guest and I, we're going to review the demos. We're going to give our feedback on it. Uh, maybe some ideas on ways to improve, things that we might recommend changing. But also keep in mind, we're just two people with our own opinions. And, uh, you know, you can take them for what you want, take it or leave it. But uh, we're humbly offering uh, our opinions uh, to help you take your music to the next level. Um, so let's uh, jump into my guest, who I'm really excited to have. I've been a big fan of uh, Jeremy's music for quite some time, uh, many years, um, particularly his label, Vi is it Viverant or Vibrant? <laughs> Let me start. Vibrant. Vibrant. It's, it's, uh, it's a play on um, Q-Tip did a song called Vibrant oh, Thing. Oh, right on, right on. So I kind of yeah. just uh, took that. Um, awesome. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's the head of uh, Vibrant, uh, where he releases uh, most of his productions through there and uh, many great productions from other producers. He's also released on Unjuna Deep, Last Night on Earth, Suara, Bedrock, My Micro Castle and uh, many others. Uh, I think most notably, uh, one thing I'm a huge fan of was your Balance CD. Um, really, really oh, gorgeous. Oh, nice. Uh, I've listened to that a few times, and I don't Thank have you, much man. time to listen to music for enjoyment, but this is one of the things that's uh, made in my rotation. So uh, yeah, I put a lot of effort into it, so I appreciate yeah, it. I actually, uh, if we have time, I might ask you a couple questions about that. Um, yeah, but of course. If, in, in, in addition to the Balance CD, he also has a set on Circle uh, from 2018 in, uh, in a beautiful building in Sweden. Um, and all around, he's uh, a really, really awesome producer. Uh, from what I hear and from what we've chatted, a really, really nice guy and has a lot of uh, insights to offer uh, to help take your music to the next level. So welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for your time. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, man. So let's just uh, start with uh, how have the last... What are two years been for you through the pandemic and, uh, you know, all the waves we've been through? Um, I think it's been pretty good. Like going into it, I was um, freaking out a little bit, you know, um, didn't know how long it's going to last, uh, how this will affect the scene, how, how our producers going to respond to this. I was very worried that, you know, everyone was going to get so much time in the studio so I was freaking out about my own ability to, you know, be productive in the studio and kind of stay up uh, with everyone else. You know, like I feel like everyone was just going to go home, make bangers forever. Mm -hmm. And it was just going to be this inflation of good music. So I had a really rough time in the studio, actually, because I had that in the back of my head. Um, but as soon as I let that thought out of my head, uh, I feel like I made some good music and, uh, you know, Sweden being the country that it is, has helped out a lot, even for people like us, uh, you know, financially. Mm. Um, so I feel like I've been in a good place. You know, I've had time with my family. I had my second kid. I, uh, been in the studio and I've been on parental leave now since May. Awesome. Um, and now in, in, in the fall, I've been in touring again. So it's been good. That's great. And, uh, you know, one thing selfishly, uh, you know, we, we touched on this before, but I'm learning to navigate the world of uh, being a parent and, and, <laughs> and managing tour life at the same time. And I can say I, I haven't quite cracked the code on that. But how do you manage? You have two kids. How do you manage balancing, you know, being on the road, having a kid at home and uh, trying to, you know, Fire on all, on all cylinders on being creative and, and being a parent. So, you know, you have like 24 hours a day. Everyone has 24 hours a day. So you got to give something up, right? I mean, you have, you want to have your studio time, you want to have time with friends, you want to have time with family. So I guess I've given up a little bit on times, time with friends. Mm -hmm. Um which in the beginning was kind of annoying, but I was already used to it being away so much, you know, like missing out on parties on weekends and stuff like that. Um, but now I feel like, you know, when I get to see my friends, it's like, okay, guys, let's really properly hang out. Like, yeah, let's yeah, fucking yeah. hang. Like, let's, <laughs> no one touches their phone. Um, so I think it's, it's, in that sense, it's good. And I think 
you got to have a good partner that mm -hmm. understands what you're doing when you're touring, um, that understands that it's it's work, it's fun, but it's work, right? So like, okay, they're doing you kind of a favor, but at the same time, it's your job. Um, and if you have a good partner that understands that, then you're already like you're already golden. Sure, sure. Absolutely. And uh, I don't think a lot of uh, people understand that. You know, they're thinking, oh, you're just the way you're having a good time in a booth. And yeah, of course, it's fun. But they don't take into aspect like the traveling and everything. So, um, yeah. yeah that's, that's one thing I, I kind of realized where you mentioned it, it's your job. I, I still love playing music now as much as I did before. But after having a kid, uh, it's not like when I go to some city I've never been before, I'll stay there for four or five days and then have a good time and, uh, and hang out. Now it's like, you know, it's like, I'm going to the office, I'm coming home and, and, and managing the home life. Yeah. And, and beyond that, I, I don't want this to come, come across the wrong way, but now my, my DJing and my career has also felt more like a job, uh, not from the perspective of something that I hate going to, but it, uh, it's created a much more sense of purpose uh, for what I'm doing. So maybe not on, on the creative front, but it's like now every time I play a gig, I'm not just playing to, you know, pay my you know cell phone bill or my rent or to, you know, enjoy my artistry. I actually have a purpose to support this human, you know, to make sure yeah. he has good education, to make sure he's clothed. Yeah. And it's this, this job. Uh, I'm, I'm now working not just for myself, but to make sure someone else can live and, and have a happy life outside myself. Yeah, and you try to have like a longer plan as well, right? Like before, maybe I was looking one year ahead, but now I'm trying to plan like, okay, so how am I going to support him or them, you Absolutely. know, until they turn 18? Absolutely. And that's a much longer, longer time span. So um, it, it definitely changes everything. But at the same time, I feel um, it's still as fun, maybe even more, because I appreciate the time I have in the studio more. Before, yeah. you know, I could just pop into the studio whenever. But now I have my designated time when they're in, taken care of in, uh, in daycare or whatever. Yes. And I know I only have these hours to make something, and I've got to make use of it. Ruthless efficiency is necessary. It's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> and it's both bad and good, because sometimes you go in and you're like, oh, my God, I made a fucking shit track today, you know? Yep. I know it happens to me a lot. Uh, yeah. question, question from the chat. Uh, how often uh, does your partner come out to your shows or travel with you? And did that change once kids were involved? Mm, it changed a, a little bit when the kids came into the picture, for sure. I think um, she came when I went somewhere that maybe she knew someone or she was curious about or she knew it was a fun city. Mm -hmm. Like London is always a good time. Mm -hmm. She loves London. Um, we've been to Argentina together because <coughs> the family has a place there. So we went there for holiday and I did some shows. Um, she's been with me in, um, we did a, I did a long tour. I went to Korea, Australia and, uh, Bali in Indonesia. Nice. So we, br we brought the kid along for that one and just kind of did a family trip about the whole thing. Nice, nice, um, nice. and I guess. Like if we go somewhere where it makes sense, it's fun to bring everyone, you know? The only problem is that, uh, that she has to stay at home in the hotel room with a kid. That's, I'm glad you mentioned that because I haven't yet traveled uh, with my wife and son yet, but I'm wondering, uh, you know, because it's half holiday, half work, yeah. you know? And yeah. who's going to take care of my kid, uh, you know, if my wife wants to, wants to come to the show? Um, but if you have family or, or friends or whatever that can do that, then that works out. But same time you're still experiencing this uh, experiencing the city together right and sure. uh, they might not go to the club but that's just one aspect of it totally totally so i want to jump a little bit into uh your creative process as mentioned i'm, I'm a big fan of your work uh beautiful melodic music uh great you, melodic, uh, great melodic elements and textures how do you approach your empty canvas when you sit down in your DAW, uh, whatever that is, let's say Ableton Logic. Do you do you feel inspired? You know, when you're sleeping, does a melody come to you in your dream, or do you just kind of play around with things? How does that? How does your process? No, work? I'm not one of those that like get a melody in my dream and uh, write it down. I'm not musically trained. I don't know scales. I don't know how to play a piano. Um, I think I like to write notes a lot on my phone. I like like to write down um, 
I mean, if anyone else would read them, they wouldn't understand what I'm talking about, but I write down ideas for a vibe maybe. And um, that helps me a lot when you, when I come into the studio, if I have an idea for a vibe, like I want it to sound like, I don't know, it can even be a song that I've heard from another genre, mm -hmm. you know, like take the vibe from mm -hmm. this song, like mm -hmm. Tame Impala, whatever. Uh, and I prefer going into the studio with those kind of notes, like just going in with, with a blank head. Uh, it can be fun, but it's, uh, I think it's always helpful to have an idea of what you want to accomplish when you go to the studio. Sure, sure, that uh, makes sense. But that could be anything, you know. And uh, let's say of the number of new pieces of work that you start, what percentage of those sessions actually turn into a completed track? And of the tracks that you complete, what percent do you actually release? <laughs> um, maybe I finish, I would say maybe half I, I finish. And of that, maybe I release a quarter, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like to make tools, you know, I like to make stuff that are fun to play out, um, but it's going to stay in my in my record box. Sure. Um, it's not something I want to, you know, I don't think it's release worthy. Got it. That makes sense. I think, uh, you know, on that note, I, I run an artist mentorship program where I help up, uh, up and coming, you know, DJs and producers. And one of the, the lessons which uh, aligns with what you were saying is, a lot of times, especially when we start out, every track that we create, or I, I've gone down this path where I think it's going to be a hit, or it's going to be the one, or I have to release this because I've put so much work into it, yeah. where one of the things I've learned over the years through production and, and talking to other producers is it's often about quantity. Finish a lot of work and yeah. have work to pull from and then decide where it fits. Or maybe you just set that, set that piece of work aside for now, and maybe two or three years from now, Maybe you're doing a balance compilation and maybe it fits in there. Maybe you're doing a circle thing and you want something exclusive or maybe, you know, uh, what's in style has changed and that fits in there. So don't be you afraid. Gotta, you got to get, get into the habit of finishing things. Absolutely. And that can be difficult. Like if you're not feeling it 100%, it might be difficult to finish it, but it's such a good practice to to finish songs because I, I hear that from so many producers like or like up and coming guys. Like what, what's your advice? How do you finish songs? Um, and I think you just have to push yourself to, to just finish them. If, if you have to like copy the arrangement of another song, just do that. And then when you do it yourself, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be helpful for you. Okay, then I finished it. Even though you copied the arrangement, you still made it, right? You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's yours. It's and how you, you learn how to play piano, right? Like, okay, you, you got to play this song made by someone else. That's how you learn how to play piano. The same thing goes with arrangement. 100%. I completely agree on that. And also, I mean, similar to playing piano, finishing a track is kind of like a muscle. It's, it's a skill. You have to develop it. And when you finish one track, it's your first track, it's really hard. But by the time you've done five tracks or 15 tracks or 50 tracks, you get better and better at understanding what you your do. artistic fingerprint is and what your process yeah. is. And maybe it starts by copying some other arrangement, but it slowly evolves into your own fingerprint and getting yeah. really good at lifting that weight and, uh, and moving on and on. So yeah, awesome. Um, so uh, let's jump into some demos. How does that sound? Sounds good. Oh, and uh, the last thing <laughs> definitely worth noting is we'll be playing together. Uh, well, you'll be playing uh, <laughs> uh, not not back to back, but we'll both be sharing the stage in Los Angeles, uh, January first evening into January second uh, for the compound. It's a big warehouse party, and I'm sure it's going to be a good time. So, looking forward to uh, meeting you there in person. And uh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, for the demos, we're going to start with. All the submissions from my Patreon supporters first. Uh, next month, if you want to jump your track to the top of the queue, you can support me at patreon.com slash Atouche Music. And then after the Patreon submissions, we'll jump to the rest of the community submissions and we'll try and get to as many as we can. We won't make it to all of them, but we'll do all our best to give feedback on those tunes. All right. So let's get these windows arranged here. 
The first track we have here is from Sirius. It's called New World. Oops. And uh, you ready to go? Yeah, man. Cool. Let's start from the beginning here. All right. There we go. Gonna jump forward a little bit, uh, just in the interest of time. Cool. I'm gonna pause it there. Um, so I'll go first on this one, Jeremy, and then uh, you can uh, chime in your thoughts. Okay. Overall, I, I felt this was pretty solid. I uh, I think this is uh, playable. I think this would work at a mid to mid tempo melodic set. Um, I think the melodic elements stacked perfectly against one another. I think it all worked. Um, I actually don't feel like anything's 
wrong with this track? I think, no. maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe some ideas on things that I might do if I wanted to push it to the next level. Um, on that note, where I think it is now, I think it's a playable track. I think it would work. I think it's stylistically appropriate. And you might have heard me say this in streams previously. What are the things that could be done to take this from a track that you might hear at a club that works well to the next level, which is a track that you might remember or that you might Shazam and that you might really want to come back to in your collection? And I also think that's an interesting space to explore, to take something from good to great. I might start with... I think the groove is fine. Maybe there's some room to play with some weird textures or some feels here uh, to give a little bit of personality. I think with the actual synth textures, there could be room to experiment and play with maybe some sounds that are a little bit weirder or have a little bit more movement. I think in the beginning, uh, that main synth, you have an LFO thing with going, which is really nice. That, that gives it some movement. Maybe you could play with uh, changing the LFO speed at different times. Maybe you can LFO different aspects of that synth texture. You know, maybe you're sign folding, or maybe uh, maybe you LFO in and out of you know uh, different wave shapes. Um, you know, the ARP is nice. I think it's melodically mel melodically appropriate. There, I might also spend some time just kind of going balls to the wall and seeing if you want to get a little bit weirder with it um, and just adding some more personality. But overall, those are my first thoughts. I think the track is good and it's solid overall. And I would just think about what are some things I can do in the textures to kind of weird it up or to give it more personality or, or something that kind of sticks in someone's mind to want to come back to it. Uh, just my thoughts. Jeremy? Um, yeah, for me, that, I mean, that was a really good start of, uh, of demos. You set the bar high. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the mix was very good. Like you said, it's definitely playable. Um, it caught my attention. I, I like this mixture of these rhythms that I'm more used to hearing from <sighs> deeper stuff. Like this sounded pretty big and, and full, you know, uh, but it had these rhythms and drums that I would ex expect in an earlier track. Um, but overall it was amazing. I think for me, like if this was part of an EP, it probably wouldn't be the lead single. It just doesn't have the lead single element to it. But it's definitely a really, really strong uh, B side in my head. So that's a uh, a famous phrase, and I, I've I've heard this as from the <laughs> side, and I've said this as a label head side so many times, which is yeah, this is a great B side. So maybe you can shine on light, you know, the way you think about things with with vibrant. What makes something an A side? What is a label head looking for? in an A-side track? Is it something that would have hands in the air? Is it something that has a memorable lead? What is this elusive A-side that all the labels are looking for? I don't know, man. It's like, it's, you don't know it until you hear it, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. Like, it just kind of catches you off guard. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to do anything with energy, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It just has to do with, like, you going, whoa, like, what's that? Mm -hmm. was playing at the moment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i mean this song is good and i think it could create some amazing moments um but uh, you just need that extra spark for yeah. a song to be yeah, yeah. like this is the a side like this is it this one will turn heads on the dance floor and people will people will remember this one but it was still it was an amazing song i think the fun thing is the B sides usually do the best in my opinion, like because it's the ones that are most accessible for DJs to play. Mm -hmm. Because DJs they don't like to play, in my opinion, other DJs or labels A sides. Like they prefer to play the B sides, right? Like I feel like all, all the B sides always get the most support and the A sides are the ones that maybe get the most plays on Spotify. Totally, totally. Uh yeah, I, I think I think I agree with you, and I think maybe that that space, uh, what makes something an, an A side, is perhaps what I was talking about—that gap between something that's good and great. Like, what really pushes it to the next next level to make something memorable, as opposed to you know something that you hear and never really think about again. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks for the submission. Uh, nice to really off, nice. Off, off to off to a strong start. You've set yeah. the bar high, and uh, let's jump into the next one. Uh, this one is from 
Ramza and Chauncey Gardner, uh, another Patreon supporter. So thank you for the support there. And this is called Stone Tempo. So off we go. Afraid of Detroit by Claude Von Stroke. Remember that That's one? That's what I wrote down on my phone. Oh, nice.
All right, Jeremy, I'll let you uh, lead with feedback on this one first. Oh, we may have lost him. I see one bar on his network connection. Uh, let's see if we get him back. And let me just drop him a message on WhatsApp. Oh, oh, <laughs> I I can hear you. Oh, we, we okay. got you back. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll start. I'll start then. Sure. Um, just like you said, it sounded like who's afraid of Detroit. So I was going to say like this sounds super dirty, birdie, uh, in a good way. I think it sounds very, very cool. I didn't like. I didn't, had no idea where this song was going. Um, I think uh, the clap or something was a little bit too uh, harsh for me in the mix. Um, but apart from that, the mix was sounding really good, and. Um, I love this whole druggy vibe going on. Um, I can definitely see myself playing this uh, during a longer set for sure. Cool. Any any areas of improvement? Things that you think uh, might take it to oh, the next level? Uh, apart from the clap, oh, right, um, you did I think I feel like some part could have gone a little bit crazier, like mm -hmm. maybe some sort of space delay thing happening where, where the drums all go quiet and it's just, I guess kind of like Who's Afraid of Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, Would have been cool for sure. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Yeah. Right on. Uh, yeah, I liked a lot about this track. It's a very unique sounding track, which uh, yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I, I complain about or I complain, one of the, the biggest criticisms I have is that uh, music sounds like everything else and what i like about this is it doesn't i mean it reminded me of who's afraid of detroit but it's obviously not that uh especially if it came out in 2021 2022 we would i feel like it has its own vibe so hats off on doing something that to me feels original very I, original yeah so that's that's a strong start from the beginning i agree with jeremy's feedback on the clap uh being too harsh and for my ears i would actually go a little bit further I felt like I never. I, I love what's happening in the melody and and the way it has the blips and that ding 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 ding. I, I feel like the melodic elements are great for my taste personally, which you can ignore. The percussion felt kind of crowded and like really loud, and a lot was kind of going on with these these sounds. And until the bass line came in, I never really felt hooked into the groove completely, which. Again, that's just a personal thing. I would, if I was taking a stab at this, I might play with uh, shortening the percussion sounds or trying some other percussion sounds that maybe make it feel a little bit crowded. And then that space that's created, I might run with Jeremy's idea and playing with more weird, trippy delays or like different reverbs here and there with those blips and all that. To me, the excitement that I derive from this track is what's happening in, in the melodic elements. So I would play with focusing on the strengths there and maybe scaling back on the groove a little bit. I like, but that's, again, just my, my taste. Um, I like the surprises in the arrangement. Like, yeah, yeah, me too. Out of nowhere, uh, which, which I just wasn't expecting. So hats off to that again. Maybe I would spend a little time, and this is kind of in contrast to that, playing with ways to maybe glue uh, different sections together a little bit more. I, I really like being surprised I would just like toy with seeing maybe if I wasn't as surprised because when I started kind of getting into a groove, which was a little hard for me with all the percussion going on, and then I got snapped out of it, it was a little bit much for me. So I would, my taste only again, I would toy with seeing if I could glue some arrangement elements together, but that would be at the cost of really surprising listeners on the dance floor. And Ramza, I know, you know, we, we've worked together. I think that's kind of your signature, what you enjoy doing. So definitely 100% welcome to veto my opinion. Uh, Ramza really enjoys having these surprise moments in tracks. Uh, which I love really a great. good surprise moment. Yeah. So feel free to ignore what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, there he goes. I love the surprises. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then a couple highlights. Uh, when we came out of the break, you know, when, when the beat came in, uh, that was a really, really strong moment for me. That's when my head was definitely bobbing. And when the bass line came in, I touched on that before uh, for the first time. Then I really started being able to hook on the groove much better than before. But 
Uh, high level, I'm I'm in agreement with with Jeremy. I think um, it's really unique, a lot of cool elements, and I think there's room to play with some of the the trippiness with your your high elements, uh, whether it's in your delays, your reverbs, even maybe play with changing your delay times to so kind of get that kind of thing. Sky's the limit over there, but really really so, nice. So overall. you you worked with with this guy Ramsar before? Yeah, he uh, was in my artist mentorship program. He's on pause now, but uh, we'll be resuming again at some point. Yeah, one of my mentees. Yeah, yeah, nice guy. Nice. And he's he's come a long way with his productions too. Take a minute minute to shout out to Ramza. Um, you know when we first started working together a few months ago, and and where he is now with his productions, I'm I'm really proud to see your your progress on that. So, hats off and uh, keep moving forward. Nice. All right, shall we move to the next one? This is from Snowed In. Whoops, I just opened Asana. Did not mean to do that. Um, let's jump to Snowden. This is called Uyi Blick. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, change this caption here. You already have my interest in the first uh, few seconds. Yeah. Of this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cooking some beats. <laughs> Everything feels right to me so far. So far, so good. No.
gliding thing. I'm going to pause here, even though I want to hear this until the end, but just in the interest of uh, time, uh, we want to get to as many people as possible. I'll lead on this one, Jeremy. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you wanted to say something. Go I think you're going to say the same thing I was. <laughs> okay, no, you start. You start. Okay. I think this was great. I think yeah, this was uh, really, 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 really nice. Uh, and I don't have a lot of uh, critical feedback, so I'll tell you why I think it was great. Um, right from the intro, you had me hooked. Uh, it had this kind of filtered little broken inspired beat um the the big thing which i give the feedback uh points the most on to other tracks in these discord demo days is when you have a, a lead automate it evolve the lead sound so it just doesn't sound loopy and that's exactly what you did here do 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 that's going through the entire track and i i got a little bit bored of it i I'll talk about that later. But overall, you did a really, really good job of playing with the ADSR, playing with the filter, playing with the envelope. And you, I don't feel like you overdid it. Sometimes you would use it just as like fills to lead into the next section, which was really nice. Um, you squeezed as much life as you can out of a relatively simple uh, synth lead sound. And I think this this track is a great example of how to squeeze the most out of a sound and, and keep it engaging. Um, on that note, my critical feedback is it wouldn't be the worst thing to try just giving the listener's ears a break at some point because um, I think that line even plays all the way through the breakdown. Um, maybe just playing arrangement-wise to give the ears a little bit of a break so when it comes in uh, after the drop, it could be even more impactful. But even if you don't do that, I think it's still... Uh, pretty great overall. Uh, in the breakdown, there were some really nice textures, some really subtle things. I, I heard some like I think it was like kids or a woman whispering, like really, really low. That went through the whole song, didn't it? Oh, really? Oh, well, it. it I, I love those kind of details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so subtle touch, um, which it shined to me most in the breakdown, but uh, throughout the track, um, yeah, lots of details. Um, melodic elements are really tastefully chosen. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I really don't have a lot of critical, critical feedback here. This was a solid tune overall. Yeah, not me either. But I think one thing you could have done with the lead to keep it more interesting, because that sounds, at some parts, it sounds great to me. Like um, when it's a little bit more released, but when it's a little bit more filtered, it sounds a little bit too trancy to me, which is not necessarily wrong. It's just uh, my taste, but I think if you had that same melody and you layered it with another synth, maybe like a marimba sound or something, and like layered it on top of that arpeggio, keep going, like, you know, and kind of switch between them um, would be something very cool and uh, it would definitely add more excitement to the melody without taking away from the melody. Um, but I love that song. That was really nice. I would love to hear it if you if you picked up on that feedback. Um, doing something like that, like changing the sound and like mixing it with something and interchanging between them and letting them play with each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. um, and just layering it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, cool. We uh, <laughs> another. I mean. We're setting the bar really high here. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> Is it always like this? Um, not usually. I, I didn't curate this. This is just how the the cards happen to lay. So, um, <laughs> yeah. This is, this is we're off to a a much better than usual start. So, um, hats off to that. But uh, for anyone else who wants to submit uh, demos for next month, the tracks don't have to be awesome. Uh, and Jeremy and I were talking about this before the stream. I'm not handpicking tracks that sound signable or sound awesome. I mean, I want to hear tracks from producers at all levels because there's something to learn at every step along the way. So don't be intimidated or don't be discouraged. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, 
It's, it's funny because of- you know when, when I started making music, I was hanging out on uh, on a forum called uh, by Laidback Luke. He had a forum, right, where he had this um, where he had somewhere where everyone can send music, and he would feedback everything. And it was it was such an amazing place to learn how to produce, and you you could read what other people were doing uh, as well, you know. So you could see what feedback he was giving them, and Avicii was one giving uh, sending oh, wow. music, and he obviously didn't have that much feedback for him, but <laughs> he had more for me. <laughs> but it's it's just an amazing platform, uh, and I, I think it's great to see that people are able to send music like this. So this is like the next step in. Uh, and taking that forward. So that's, yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks to everyone who's uh, submitting their work. And I've talked about this on previous dreams. It's not easy having people no. listen to uh, to your work uh, and, and giving critical feedback. And it's uh, just even submitting your, your track in, in the in the Discord channel, whether we get to it or not, that's uh, an accomplishment in itself to be open and receptive to feedback. So hats off on that. And, and thanks, everyone, for participating. Yeah, it takes a lot, but I think it's also important to to help evolve as well. So uh, don't be shy. 100%. The times that we grow in life are often the times that are the most uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Word. All right. So let's jump into the next demo submission. I think we have uh, this one, then one more from the Patreon batch. Then we'll jump into the rest of the community. This one's from Ali Oxenfree called Minutia. Here we go.
was super nice. Very nice. Just great dynamics here. Not blasting everything. Play this in LA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> Send it to me first. <laughs> This part, yeah. This is like, I love everything, but this is actually my favorite part so far. Someone said uh, Dead Mouse vibes early in the track. Kind of, kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Or early prints, yeah. Someone who you know quite a bit about. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to pause it here. Um, Jeremy, you want to take the lead on this one? Yeah, so I'm like writing down, down notes while I'm listening. Um, let's see, there was a, a noise in the beginning of the break. Should I jump I in? Yeah, it was a small, like, I think. This thing? That, the noise filter. I'm not crazy about those. Um, I think it could be done differently and more exciting, or just skip it altogether. I mean, it's it's dangerous to, um, in my opinion, to make like beatless breaks. Like it has to really live up to the expectations when you do it. Um, and if you're not sure if it's going to live up to it, I would just let the beat keep going. You know, in my opinion, that's you know, that's my my opinion. But um, I would make the the drop a little bit bigger somehow, maybe like working a reverb on the clap or something. I would also, the, I think the kick comes in like all of a sudden, like filtered. Um, I would fade that in hmm. instead of like just it completely coming abruptly. 
just fade it in in volume, I think would be a cool thing for building tension. And what else did I write? Okay, some reverb on the clap. And I would definitely do a small uh, beatless uh, break before that end part that you were like, Ooh, <laughs> this is nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. Cool. Um, I I suspect that uh, your your level of detail feedback that you're given here is uh, probably uh, indicative of you feeling the vibe on this one. Um, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. These these are once you get to these these low level feedback, uh, German. <laughs> when you get to the these small feedbacks about like a noise riser and things, those are signs that uh, the track is at a pretty good level already. Um, so on that note, I think this is really really nice. Um, we're just on a roll here with with great submissions, and uh, I think Jeremy's feedback is great. I would say my i mean overall it's it's very sensitive it's melodic i can imagine hearing this at a really nice you know mid tempo club moment or even after like a big moment if i'm kind of doing a, like a little bit of a come down with an emotional moment in the set this would be it uh it has kind of a nostalgic vibe you know someone touched on you know um you know kind of a, like a dead mouse vibe in the synth texture a little bit so overall i like a lot of things let's talk about some things that i didn't feel so much running with jeremy's feedback the the break signaled to my ears that something really dramatic was going to happen. And once we got from the break uh, and the beat came back in, it felt like a little bit of a letdown to me. I'm, I'm actually going to jump into it. Yeah, so here we are. We got a snare roll. Anytime you hear a snare roll, it, there better be a payoff. And then here, I was let down here. And at first I thought this was one of those arrangement kind of fake outs where it's like, okay, we're like going big, then it takes like the energy down. And then after like a couple bars, then we take you to the actual, uh, you know, climax of the track. But here I felt like that, that mid, uh, that like mid energy thing after the break, I felt like it really dragged on quite long until the hi-hat energy came in you know, maybe it was like 45 seconds to a minute later. So I would have liked uh, either if you're, if you're going to do the snare roll, give me the bigger, you know, high head energy and that when we come out of the break or if it's like a fake drop, um, don't keep me in this limbo state for too long. Jeremy? Maybe like a ride on the kick or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And um, yeah, also in the second half, you know, after, when we come out of the break, we have that new do 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 do. Like, I feel like the filter is open all the way, and the the percussion energy wasn't living up to what was happening in the in in the synth energy. So, I it just kind of like lost me, or I wasn't sure where we were arrangement wise uh, after we came out of the break. But then when we moved into that third section of the track, um, I don't know if you can see my mouse like around here. Then I'm like, oh, okay, now here's the the release of the tension. Like all the full energy is here. Um, and I just felt like I had to wait a little too long to get there. That could have almost been the second part of the song. Mm -hmm. And then a, a, a break. So you like lose the melody for a little bit. Yeah. And then you build it up again. And then you get this kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been dope. That would have been cool. And, you know, this might be the same thing you're saying or maybe saying something different. That end section that I loved here... That thing, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about, but that yeah, use that in the middle. Yeah, okay, we are saying the same thing. Yeah, if you put, <laughs> put that as the fake, as the bridge, oh my god, I I think this would be really really nice. Yeah, and then you go back into that. Exactly. Dun, 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 dun. We're saying the yeah, same yeah, yeah. thing, uh, 100. Yeah. percent I think that could make this really really strong, um, because it just grooves so nicely and it's so beautiful. And then just last small thing, it's kind of the same thing I say in a lot of them. Synth textures and melodies are great. I could use a little more automation and movement uh, on the synth parts just to squeeze a little bit more life out of them. But you know, in the big scale of feedback I could, I could give on this track, it's a really, really nice track. I think, in my opinion, it's like 90% there. I think with maybe one session, you know, just tweaking a few things here and there, um, I would gladly play this track. Um, mm, I would very gladly play this track. So um, if, if you... Develop it some more. Uh, feel free to send it my way, and I think Jeremy's open to uh, you sending it his <laughs> way as well. But uh, hats off, nice work here. Really nice tune. All right, and the last one from the Patreon batch. We have 
Oh, this link is not working. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, cause there's no colon. Um, this is from Drew Proud, another one of my artist mentees. And uh, this is Fiona V2. Off we go. mentees and uh i'll just pause it. yeah drew is one of my mentees and a lot of uh feedback not positive or negative it has a lot of that retro kind of feel which is super cool that's uh this stylistic kind of vibe yeah it reminds me of like a proggy uk big weed sasha back in the day kind of thing out of this break and I'll pause it.
pause it there. Um, Jeremy, if you don't mind, I'm going to let you go first on this one. Drew and I have actually worked on this track a little bit. Oh, really? Our mentorship sessions. Um, so he's heard a lot from me on this one already. So I'll, I'll let you uh, lead with this one. Um, well, I, I really like the vibe, like I mentioned before. It really reminds me of, like, um, I would say Digweed, Sasha, a kind of proggy vibes that I fell in love with a um, long time ago. And um, I just feel like it has some mixing issues. Like, I feel in my taste, that bass that comes in every now and then, like da -da 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 -da. it goes through every now and then. I would like a lot more sub in that. I don't know why. It's just a matter of taste. Uh, I'm with you on that one, yeah. And I think the vocals could be mixed a little bit better, maybe layered or something. I don't know. Um, in the beginning, they sounded great, but when the break came, everything sounds good about the vocals, like what she's saying and everything, but it could be mixed better. Um, but overall, I'm loving this song. This is exactly my vibe. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Jeremy approved. Um, so my feedback uh, from the earlier versions I have, I think this is moving in a great direction. I think uh, the feedback I'll give here is, I think the melodic elements are really, really nice, especially that uh, envelope open, ding a ding a ding a ding a ding It's really, really nice, really melodic. Um, I feel like the energy of the groove isn't keeping up with the energy of what's happening in in the synths. And I would probably, uh, and I, I think also to Jeremy's point, some of it's a mixing issue as well. I think some of the uh, some of the elements that could give it energy, the sub bass, the bass, are a little bit buried. I would maybe play with experimenting with a little bit more energy in the hi hats uh, in your high percussion. Um, for me, I just my ears are just asking for this to kind of like, I want to gallop kind of forward and just kind of like bob my head even more than I was. It it feels like, you know, I'll kind of get in the groove and I'll kind of like lose steam on it. And then we'll go into like a small drop and then get back in. I like the elements. I just don't feel like I'm totally locked in. So yeah, I think my, my high level point is I would play with uh, beefing up the groove, adding some more energy in the high percussion. And... I don't know if it's me. Uh, Jeremy, I wonder what you think. I'm not sure if the scale that... Uh, this is a Fiona Apple uh, sample from Criminal. I'm not sure if the scale that she's singing in is the same scale that uh, is, is melodically sitting perfect with what the synth elements are. On one it's hand... It's not completely there, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to read notes or anything, but mm -hmm. to, to my ear, it sounded like, you know little bit off but not bad off you know like sometimes it can be nice to be a little bit off that is true it doesn't have to all well, that's character. that is true uh absolutely and uh that's actually kind of one of the upsides maybe we could take a, a quick aside where i think it's great that you mentioned that you don't have classical piano training or, or classical you know music theory training and i think a lot of producers i get a lot of questions saying you know, should I take music theory lessons or should I learn how to play an instrument before doing, you know, electronic music production? And the answer is no, that's not necessary. Yeah. It comes down to electronic music. I mean, music in general is how does it make you feel? Yeah. And if you just, you know, lay down some random notes in a, in a MIDI roll and, and it makes you feel good, then, then that's the right answer, whether or not it adheres to proper music theory or not. So yeah. this is kind of a good opportunity to talk on that. I mean, it feels right to Jeremy. So that's 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 the number one thing does it feel right i mean it sounds a little bit wrong but not crazy wrong it, it, i think it has character some of the dissonance and yeah some of the yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's that's a further extension on that point where it doesn't have to sit perfectly uh, sometimes like detuning oh. stuff it sounds it adds yeah it has character yeah. yeah yeah so yeah uh good good point of view on that so yeah overall i would say i i want more energy uh in the perk to keep up with the uh, energy in the synths and um we talked about this a little bit it feels a little herky-jerky where i just never fully get locked into the groove and then last thing on the mix the uh that palm muted guitar dun, 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 dun. a little bit harsh that, yeah a little bit harsh and i would pull that back in the mix because that's part of what's drowning out some of the other elements but, but i really i could see that like if it was mixed good and every element was like perfect i could see that being really fun on the dance floor for sure definitely 
Cool. All right. So that wraps up everything from the group of Patreon submissions. Thank you, everyone, for your support. Really appreciate it. And now let's take a little break and listen to a remix of yours, Jeremy. This <laughs> is a uh, remix that you did of uh, Swim Rabbit, uh, Shy Creatures. Do you want to just uh, talk a little bit about what this remix is, the label that came on, what the process was? Yeah, I mean, okay, so I've been in Korea a few times. The people that follow me know that I'm a big fan of, of Korea in general, but Korean filmmaking uh, especially. And so I, I've been there a lot, and it's been a big impression on me. And the guy who's brought me there, he has this label that does, I guess it's indie R&B-ish, like it's very experimental music that he releases and then he booked me so i got to know him he told me about his label he showed me the label and i'm like this is very very cool and it has no appeal whatsoever in in outside of, of korea and um, malaysia i think it is or uh, indonesia whatever so i was like we should do something together i think that would be a cool left field thing to do like let's let's do something together and we talked about it and then six months later my manager was like, okay, let's do a remix swap with them. So we pick out some tracks from, from their artists. Um, and uh, so Moa Mula did a remix, Marino Canal did a remix, uh, Vigo Dist has done a remix, uh, Ken did a remix. Uh, am I missing someone? I don't think so. So, so we all did remixes, interpretations of their music, which was really cool because some of the songs have Korean lyrics. I don't think that the, the, the we know what they're saying, you know? Um, but it's, it's, it's been a fun project. We invited them over to Sweden oh, nice. to come and have like a workshop. We did uh, an event where um, we showcased their music from like their original music from the, from the artists from Korea. And uh, I, I DJed with uh, Moa and Oling, another guy from the label. Um, we had like a sit down dinner. No, it's really cool. So um, it's a fun project. I like to do this kind of, you know, not just typical projects, one techno label, remix and another techno label. I think it's fun to try and mix it up. Uh, and this is what I came up with. Very cool. Let's uh, jump right in. When is this coming out? Mm, maybe January, February. Cool. I think. Feel free to uh, feedback. <laughs> Super nice, man. It's nice. Really, really cool. <laughs> not not just saying that. I mean, it's really nice. Oh. <laughs> 
feedback on this that was awesome <laughs> that yeah, was, thanks, uh, i mean no that was uh, honestly it was uh really really nice um i would play this in a second this was <laughs> this dance mode I I had, it too. those tingles on the top of my head and down my spine and uh the vocalist uh so good beautiful voice absolutely so beautiful fucking voice. good voice the harmonies I don't have anything to say, man. I mean, A plus, congrats. I mean, this is why you're Jeremy Olander because you do shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thanks. No, no, really, really. I mean, look at the chat. I mean, people are just going gaga. Um, maybe you could uh, send it to me before it comes out. <laughs> I'll send it to you. I, I would greatly appreciate that. Definitely could play this on some of my New Year's gigs. Um, awesome. So, wow. Uh, um, let's jump into uh, some communities uh, submissions outside Patreon. Um, we're running a little short on time, so we're not going to listen through full tracks. I'll just kind of jump in the middle, and we'll talk about maybe talk more about the groove or what we hear, and um, yeah, do the best we can in, in a little bit of time. So speed round begins. This is from uh, I hope I pronounced this right. Fidelilac, uh, complete beguilement.
Okay, here's that snare roll again. <laughs> Better pay off. Listen, maybe 30 seconds more. My biggest thought is on the mix down, actually. All right, I'll pause it there, um, just in the interest of time. Um, my my biggest I think a lot of the melodic elements are fine. I think they they play well together nicely. Um, I just feel like it's not fully. I'm I'm not a mix down engineer, so I just feel it's like not fully popping. I feel like the bass and the arp are a little bit subdued. I feel like something is lacking. Some energy is lacking in the mids or somewhere around the mids. It just feels like it's a little bit hollow. Um, the first place I would start would be uh, playing with the mix and trying to squeeze out the most you can at, at your various uh, levels in the EQ spectrum. Um, that's kind of the first thought. I don't really have any strong feelings on it. I mean, I think the track seems seems fine overall. Yeah, Jeremy, what do you think? No, I think it sounds really good. I think the, the snare drum might be a little bit too punchy. Um, like I would add some attack to it. Uh, and maybe layer it with a clap. Um, but to me, it sounded really good. I liked it. Cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, not, not much to do <laughs> on this one. Uh, to be honest, I'm still kind of reeling from that remix. Um, <laughs> it's kind of unfair to have anyone uh, have to have to have their track played after that one. I should have done a palate cleanser, like some lounge music or something, <laughs> or, or some elevator music. But um, it's it's unfortunate someone had to go after that one, but uh, yeah, overall Jeremy liked it. Um, I think I think the track um, melodically sounded fine. Everything sounded, uh, you know, the structure uh, was good. Everything was good. Yeah. Compositionally was good. Yeah, for me, just the mix, I felt like it didn't really pump or drive as much as as I would have wanted for a track like this. Sorry if the feedback wasn't super helpful. Um, you know, I'm doing my best. <laughs> um, all right, so let's jump to uh, this is uh, from J Pi and Viridian uh, called Syntax and Semantics. Uh, just going to jump to the uh, middle a little bit here. Oh, okay, right into it. Yeah. <laughs>
I need this song. Yeah, I know. I like, <laughs> Shit. Okay, I'm going to pause it there. Uh, man, I wish we had more time so we could listen to the whole thing. Uh, Jeremy, take the lead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need that song. <laughs> um, man, this is kind of the best Discord demo day and the worst Discord demo day at the same time because <laughs> I don't have a lot of feedback to give on a lot of these tunes because they're like so freaking good. Yeah. Um, I don't. Do you have any constructive feedback here? No. no I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Neither. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking awesome. Great. Uh, I seriously, I want. I want, I need that song. <laughs> I want to play that out. Yeah, me too. Um, and I have I have a personal connection to Viridian. Um, we just finished an EP together, which is uh, coming out next year, and uh, he's a really really awesome up and coming producer and. Really, I, 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 I can I can hear his style in here. Uh, awesome, really, really awesome. Um, very, very good. Yeah, I mean, let's just move on. There's nothing to say here. <laughs> no, game over. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Good night, everyone. <laughs> yeah, mic drop. <laughs> uh, all right, let's jump to uh, Claria Cl- Claro uh, Ale wife. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Nazir remix. Oh, let's just jump to the middle here. Jeremy, you were saying you don't like it when they uh, completely drop huh? everything out. Were you saying earlier you don't like it when they completely drop out the percussion like that? <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs>
yeah, I'm just gonna pause. That's also super <laughs> nice. know, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm so. I just feel like I'm so useless here. This is more just like a, a listening <laughs> session than it is for day. I don't know. Anyone in the chat have anything to say? I, I just don't really have any feedback. You know what I would say, and I, I know, I don't know why I'm saying this because I really like the vocals in this song and it fits perfectly. But I would love to hear an instrumental of that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because the thing is, the, the vocals fit perfect. And they do add a lot, but I just want to hear, an, I think an instrumental of that one would just make it like this underground proggy banger, you know? Yeah, that's that's a great call. Uh, I would definitely play a dub version. I'm not always, you know, in the mood for a vocal track, you know, like there's, no. there's certain times and certain crowds where I'll like play a vocal track like this. Um, and yeah, if it was like more of an underground thing or a certain time of the night or depending who I'm where my time slot is. I would love it. Play, I mean, playing, playing, playing a vocal, especially having it like that with a break and everything. Yeah. It makes it very, very peak timey to play. And I would like to play this unexpectedly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like just out of a sudden, uh, instrumental. Um, but I would, I would love to hear an instrumental version of that one. Once again, send it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is another one on my on my list. Uh, we should just have like a, a bit. The vibe, the, the vibe was amazing, and and the melodies and everything, and the production sounded really tight. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. Uh, I love that kind of warbly, detuned kind of lead sound. Had so much personality to it. Um, it was one one of these like never ending melodies that just keeps going, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, nothing much more to add. Let's just keep going. Um, you know, uh, speed round. Uh, you guys are just killing it this month. Um, I just, I feel so useless here. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. I've read this somewhere. It's about uh, all the other kids with the pumped out kicks better run, better run, because they're going to shoot them. Wow. Um, which is a little bit dark, but it's <laughs> it's it's a really good song. Yeah. So I don't want I don't want to take away um, from that, but um, that could be an aspect to think about yeah. as well. Uh, Songs can become political, you know. <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, overall, I I liked it. I think it's it's just a stylistic thing and not uh, a knock on the track. It's I a track that I probably wouldn't play or I would keep it in my pocket if I was playing to less of like um, an underground crowd. Like maybe if I was playing uh, a beach party. Yeah, yeah, I guess a beach <laughs> party or if I was somehow playing like, you know, a hotel party or I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, it's, it's very accessible and, and easy on the ears, which is great. Um, or, you know, if I was playing a friend's wedding or something like that, you know, I, this, this would, that would be a great song. Um, yeah. Um, so I think musically, um, I, I like the idea where you take the, the vocal line, you do that with the synth. I think the, um, the wetness on the delay on, on the lead, it was, uh, it was taking a lot of space and kind of tiring my ears a little bit. So I would maybe play around with, changing the delay times and changing how much delay that you allow to uh to feedback um i guess changing the the wet dry on it just to give it a little bit more movement so it's not just banging my ears the whole time maybe even layering it with a different sound and making it a little bit bigger at some yeah. parts yeah yeah you know, that could work that could totally work and um the bass texture i can't put my finger on what it is it felt I would, I would, I'm not sure what to do with it. It felt a little, I think it was doing too much. Either it was taking too much space or doing too much or it was too playful. I would start with filtering out some of the highs and mids on the bass and kind of creating a little bit more space for, uh, you have that like kind of choir sound that comes in, which is really nice. I might carve out some space from the bass and maybe create some more room for, some supporting synths or pads to kind of sit underneath, similar to what you do with the choir later on. Um, yeah, the 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 bass was a little songy for me, if that makes sense. But I think it's close. I think it's close. But yeah, overall, it's a I nice. Think I know thing. what you mean. Yeah, could, can you articulate it better than me? It's, it's, I don't know how no, to it. it's, it's a, songy. I think the, the 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 best way to describe it, at least for me, is like it's it would, it would be something I would make earlier on in my like producing career and not what i would make today mm -hmm. yeah yeah it has that one thing that i might experiment with and, and this is uh something that's helped me a lot in my own personal progression as a producer is play with having two or maybe three different bass textures so it's not just that one thing that's doing doom or whatever it was doing try having some call and response amongst different bass sounds so it's not just one texture kind of singing a song on its own it has to be like a home run on the bass line for it to be yeah. working yeah yeah and it's not quite there yet but uh i would spend i think the most time i would spend what yeah would be on the bass line and uh squeezing some more life out of not fatiguing my ears on the uh the lead sign but uh overall i think for what it's doing and if you played in the right moment i think this was uh, this has a lot of potential yeah um, let's just jump to a quick question. I think we're running near the end of the stream. I haven't taken that many questions. Uh, Jeremy, you can probably see this from Moon, uh, Moon Watchers. What's your uh, Vibrant submission process like? Any tips for up-and-comers? And, -comers? and uh, what's it like running a label? Um, well, for us, we have someone acting as like a filter. It's a friend of mine who no one really knows. He's not like a public person, doesn't work in the music industry or anything. But he, I just trust his ear. And uh, he goes through a lot of it. Sometimes I go in and listen, but most of the times it's him listening. Um, and then just him kind of passing on what, what he thinks would suit us and what he likes. And then we kind of take it from there. Or, you know, I have friends who submit music, producer friends. Um, I think a platform like this would be something maybe to even look at because I think it's great to hear music like this. Um, I mean, we've heard some amazing music today. Um, at the same time, you know, when, when we put out music, we really want to pay a lot of attention to the artists that we are going to work with. 
you know, we don't want to just put out like a one-off. Um, mm -hmm. We do those, but we think it's more fun to work up some sort of relationship and do several EPs and uh, bring them on our shows and try and do stuff together. And we're trying to become even more ambitious with that, you know, having having a big studio in Sweden where people can come and, um, yeah, um, stuff like that. But um, that's how it is with some submitting. Any 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 tips you have if, if you're someone who's not well known? What are the things that um, your buddy's ear is listening for that you're listening uh, for that make you most likely to sign the track? Are there certain elements or certain sounds or even how many tracks they should submit or what kind of profile or package they have? Mm, I just think a SoundCloud link, not too many words. I don't need to know too much about your history. You will find out later. Um, Obviously, I prefer more of a clean slate. I think that's more interesting and more fun. But of course, if you release somewhere else, it's not like a game changer or anything or a mm -hmm. deal breaker. Um, but um, don't send too many songs. I think three should suffice to kind of showcase who you are and should be enough to tell us who you are. If you send five, six songs, it's in, it might become a little bit too blurry. Yeah. Um, and it makes our job more difficult as well, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I was just going to double down, you know, from my perspective on, on Manji Masi, you know, there's two or three of us who have to uh, uh, approve a track before we, we release it. And if you have 10 tracks to listen through, we're just going to keep deprioritizing it for all of us to synchronize feedback on 10 tracks. Like it's just never going to happen. Yeah. Two or three tracks, in my opinion, that showcase a little bit different stylistic things. If we like one of them, we'll ask for more. Yeah. And um, I think also to echo what you said, uh, don't get so preoccupied with already having an established profile. A lot of labels like Vibrant and my uh, label, Munji Masi, we get excited by producers who don't have a profile because I prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting to, uh, you know, because, for us, it's for me. It's kind of a, an ego thing. Like, oh, we're a tastemaker. Like, we discovered this exactly. artist. So, yeah. uh, what a lot of people think uh, hurts them it can actually be an advantage. Yeah, yeah. Times have changed. Um, I think it used to be like that before. You yeah, know, like, oh, we can't find you on Beatport. Who are you? You uh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah and, and in the days of vinyl, where you can't listen to every record in a store, so you see the names that you recognize, you know, and people are going to listen. Yeah. To um, so absolutely. So, uh, Jeremy, I know it's um, a little bit late for you. What do you say we just jump through like one or two more submissions and then uh, call it a night? Yeah, let's go ahead. Cool. Um, appreciate your time. And this one is from A. Budovsky. Oh. And it's called The Only Thing. Let's just jump to the middle here.
cool. Super speed run. So uh, I'll pause it there. Um, sorry to take you out of your zone, Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll, I think I'll go first on this one. I think you went first last time. Uh, I liked it. Really nice uh, prog inspired track. A uh, lot of energy. I think this track is an example of maximalism. I'm just kind of everything's at, uh, at full blast. Uh, yep. I think I think this would work. I don't have again. I don't have a lot of critical feedback. Maybe the only thing is, I think this might be by design. It's very lush and drenched in in reverb, and uh, everything kind of feels open and really drenched. I might play with seeing how much you can get away with scaling back uh, on the reverb. I mean, given how much is going on, the mix is actually pretty decent. I think it um, is. I mean, that's it's hard to mix that much going on. Yeah. I, minor feedback just to play with i might play with just scaling back the re the, the drenchy reverb a little bit uh and seeing if you can still get maybe even a stronger stronger emotional reaction and um i wish we had more time so i could hear the whole arrangement to see how we get to that point but overall again i'm, I'm kind of useless here I, I don't have a lot of uh, a lot of critical feedback uh jeremy it sounded it sounded uh, really good for what it is you know it's um it's a very big sounding track it's a very lush track just like you said and um honestly if that's the feeling that they're going for then i don't have much more to add to that either yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah there's they kind of nailed it yeah 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 all right, so uh, let's just do uh, one last one, then we'll call it a night. And um, before we jump into this one, um, Jeremy, uh, you are playing a Turnum Festival in Tulum, December 29th. You're playing It'll Do, Dallas, Texas, New Year's yeah. Eve. And then yeah. both of us are playing The Compound in Los Angeles, January 1st evening. So that's the January 1st going to January 2nd. I'll be playing San Francisco, New Year's Day. Um, called it's a new day it's an outdoor block party then i'll fly down to la uh to play Fun. After, after jeremy and just about to confirm a gig in new york city for new year's eve uh hopefully we'll announce that in the next couple days so i think that's like three gigs that should be fun yeah 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 definitely will be fun three gigs in 24 hours so definitely living that dj life <laughs> and, um let's see how that all goes and uh yeah that's what we got going and i'm gonna stay tuned uh, everyone stay tuned for that remix coming out from jeremy um which was absolutely massive so yeah with that that's what we have going on and let's jump into the last tune and then call it a night i'm gonna walk a little bit Cool bass texture there. Yeah.
All right, I will pause it there. Jeremy, I'll let you uh, lead for the last one. Really good mix. Um, I saw some comments here, very enemy Adam Port Rampa yeah. vibe. Yeah, yeah. Definitely no, yeah. agree. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know if the piano is a part of the, the, I guess not, no. It's because it's a vocal edit. So I guess the piano is something of their own. I would probably skip the vocals. Um, it sounded really good. I liked it. I would definitely play it if I uh, had it without the vocals, I would say. Cool. Yeah, overall, I mean, this is kind of in line with a lot of the last ones. I don't have <laughs> a lot to say on this one, really. I mean, it was really nice. It has that kind of music feel. You know, there's there's no snare. It has the piano, uh, and it's just kind of hanging there with the energy. I would be curious to hear what's going on arrangement-wise. Um, that pad that sits there, um, it takes a lot of space, and I wonder if there's any movement on that arrangement wise coming in, coming out. Uh, yeah. I, th I think with that groove, especially without a snare and when you have that ARP repeating on end, um, it's, it can be easy for the listener to get fatigued or bored uh, because you have to do a lot of work uh, around the track or your groove has to be very precise, especially if you don't have a snare. So uh, we don't have time to listen to the whole thing, but that could be one thing to, to kind of keep an eye on or review when you're listening through. Um, does the listener get fatigued with that ARP? And does the energy carry enough, uh, especially with the no snare groove? But I liked it overall. Uh, I liked it. Yeah, I, I liked it overall. And um, yeah, you know, you're playing with you know different effects on the vocals, putting the distortion and overdrive on there. I could also go with the dub version, but I'm just kind of saying a lot of words because I don't really have much to add, and I, and I feel really bad. I wanted to give a lot more constructive feedback on this whole session, but you guys have just submitted a lot of really, really quality work, so uh, hats off to everyone there. I think this is probably the highest bar uh, everyone set for the last six, seven, eight months. Very, very good music. Demo days. So on that note, I think we should end it with a high note, and I just want to take a second to uh, thank you, Jeremy. I know you have a lot going on in your life right now, and uh, it's getting pretty late over there in Sweden. So we all appreciate your time. I know a lot of my fans and a lot of new fans have come into my Discord. Really excited to hear your words and uh, and, and hang out with you for a little bit. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to hang uh, before we see each other for the first time as well. So now we know each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It will feel very <laughs> natural. Um, yeah, so on that note, I'll see you January 1st in LA and hope you get some rest tonight. Thank you, everyone, for your submissions. Sorry we couldn't get to all of them. Uh, next month, if you want to get bumped to the top, you can support, support me on patreon.com slash atish music and that will increase your chances of getting heard and until the next one thank you everyone and have a good night peace bye <clears throat>